Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, terrible books, or are they? I'm going to give you the 10 worst books I've read, according to Goodreads. So you may have seen over the last few weeks I've given you the 10 best books I've read according to Goodreads and the 10 best novels I've read according to Goodreads. So the concept here is you sort your red shelf on Goodreads by order of the uh, average rating that other users have given the book and that gives you your 10 best books. Obviously you can also do the reverse of that which is what I'm doing today and talking through the 10 worst books. Now what I discovered and the reason why I did a 10 best books and a 10 best novels list was that my 10 best books was almost all either like non-fiction or children's books or, or manga. So there was a real variety of different things in there. With the 10 worst books there's much less variety. So this is I think nine novels and one short story. Um, so much less of the non-fiction and manga in there which kind of bears out my theory that I, I came up with in those previous videos that manga tends to get you know rated very highly because people get really into the series and you know absolutely absolutely fall in love with the series and also non-fiction can feel more impactful to people and therefore get a higher rating you know from some individuals and therefore get a higher overall average rating um so anyway, let me talk you through my 10 worst books according to Goodreads. There was someone here that surprised me. A number, most of the books on here, on this list, I think are, you know, decent. I don't think there's a really terrible book on this list apart from one. There's one book on here which I have reviewed on the channel, which I thought was awful. <laughs> um, but the most of the other books I thought were, uh, there, there's a couple that weren't great, but most of them I thought were either okay or good. So anyway, let me go through the list with you. Um, and I'll also give you an indication of why I think the book has a low average rating where I don't think it's a bad book if that makes sense. Um, so at number 10 um, A Good Man by Annie Katz. So I enjoyed this so this is kind of a psychological thriller about a guy who's going through a lot of pressure in his life and kind of snaps it's that it's that kind of book and there's a bit of a mystery element to it there's a lot of kind of build up of tension I gave this book four stars I think I thought this was a solid entertaining interesting psychological thriller so I'm really not sure why uh, having said I'm going to give you a reason why I think these books have got a low average rating I'm not sure why this one's got a low average rating it's not like a book that was like massively popular sometimes when you get a book that's really really popular that loads of people are talking about and therefore loads of people read I think that can drive down the average rating and that's certainly true for some of the books on this list this was a book that I don't remember people talking about particularly I think I got a copy through NetGalley or something like that that's how, how I ended up reviewing it um, but yeah I thought it was fine I thought it was a decent thriller um at number nine, then a book I a, a book I really enjoyed. So this is Ravens by George Dawes Green. So this is a book about a family in the state somewhere I forget where who win the lottery. So they come into a huge amount of money, um, and it's about the impact of that money on their lives. So it's kind of structured like a thriller, has decent characters, an interesting central concept. I thought it was really really good. I suspect the reason why it's got a low average rating was George Dawes Green's previous book was The Jura which was a huge hit um, so made into a movie with Demi Moore I think and The Jura I thought was a really really good thriller I didn't think Ravens was quite as good I thought The Jura was great and I think loads of people read The Jura it was one of those books that when it came out everyone was talking about it was you know it had a lot of buzz um, I suspect that lots of people picked up Ravens after reading the Jura expecting something similar and it's not that similar it's quite a different style of book so I think both of them were good I thought the Jura was slightly better but I definitely don't think Ravens deserves to be one of my 10 worst books um, above that at number eight a book I can I, I think is a good book but I can absolutely understand why um, why the book is uh, where it is on this list when I say the name of the book, if you've been watching the channel for a while, it will probably be a book you know or know of, and you will understand why it's on this list. That book is Hog by Samuel R. Delaney. One of the most disgusting, disturbing, foul, appalling books I've ever read. I mean, it really is just mind-blowingly horrific and horrible and unrelentingly disgusting. Um, every 
horrible thing you can imagine is in this book and most of those things are in it again and again and again so it's a real slog to read it's a book that many people dnf i've ma- i managed to fight my way through it i'm not even going to tell you what it's about because it's so foul and disgusting but i suspect that's why it's ranked as low as it is i think it's a very well written book whatever you think of the subject matter i think it's well written but i get why people have have ranked it so lowly um Above that, so my seventh worth book I've read, uh, and and there are two books by this author on this list. I should say as well, I've got to say at the start, so one of the criteria is that all of these books have more than a thousand ratings on Goodreads. So I'm not going with books that like only a few people have read. You know, a thousand ratings is a, is a reasonable number of rating to, to, to take an average from. So at number seven then, Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, his kind of breakout novella that was, you know, everyone was talking about for a few months. Um, I didn't think it was great. A lot of people, you know, really rated this book. I thought it was interesting. I thought it could have gone further. It felt like people were saying it was like really disturbing and shocking. I didn't think it was. I thought it could have he could have pushed the envelope a bit more. But I thought it was decent and and doesn't deserve to be on a worst books list. I suspect the reason um, why it is is because it had so much buzz. Loads of people read it who probably wouldn't have picked it up otherwise, who maybe weren't the target audience. And I think that has driven the overall rating down. Uh, Ahead of that then, at number six, the the one short story that's on the list. And I thought it was worth including this because I think it's a story that's worth talking about. So that story is The Horror at Red Hook by H.P. Lovecraft. So this is, you know, H.P. Lovecraft, whatever you think about the fact that he was a horrible racist, and hopefully you agree with me that being a horrible racist is a terrible thing, um whatever you think about that he was a really great writer he wrote some fantastic stories you know he came up with you know a whole a whole bizarre world that people still write stories and make movies about today he was in many ways a genius horror at red hook is not by any means a good lovecraft story and as well as not showing him at his best in terms of his creativity, it also shows him at his worst in terms of his racism. So many of his stories are not explicitly racist. Horror at Red Hook is explicitly racist, and it's just not great. It's like a very pulpy kind of crime horror type story um, about you know bizarre goings on in um, in New York and like you know basically immigrants kidnapping people. It's it's very racist and not very good um so i think that one does probably deserve to be on a worst books list uh, ahead of that the book i really didn't like that's on this list uh, is cows by matthew stoko so i did a review of this on the channel um a while ago i just thought this was a not very good book people say you know it's one of those books that people talk about talk about when they mention disturbing books it often gets listed it's a disgusting book but not even interestingly disgusting. So Hog is a book that is really interesting in terms of how horrible it gets. Cows is just kind of gross. It's like a very puerile, it's like something a 12-year-old would write. So it's got all sorts of disgusting things in it, all sorts of horrible descriptions of cows being like farmed and mutilated and things like that. It's a weird book. Uh, it's and I just found it completely unsuccessful. Whatever Matthew Stoko was trying to do with that book, I just didn't get. I just thought it was unpleasant and pointless. Um, ahead of that, then another book that was kind of a breakout book and a book I didn't think was very good. So that book is Maestra by Ellis Hinton. Uh, sorry, Ellis Hilton. So this was a um, I can't even remember when it came out. Early two thousands, I want to say. Um, so a kind of sexy thriller. Um, so a book that was, you know, pushed in terms of the publicity, in terms of how explicit and sexy it was. I think it was about a female assassin or something like that. And lots of kind of globe trotting and glamour and, you know, fab outfits and sex and violence. And it just, it just, it just wasn't very good. I don't necessarily dislike any of those things if they're done well. In fact, they can be great when they're done well. This didn't do it well. It was just a boring, not particularly interesting book that tried to spice up its boringness by uh, putting in lots of explicit content. Um, ahead of that then, another book that I thought was decent, but I can I can see why it's on this list. And that book is Carrie Mora by uh, Thomas Harris. So this was Thomas Harris's first book published after a long lull. 
um, where he'd, you know, he'd published a few more Hannibal Lecter books after the success of Silence of the Lambs. I don't know if it was written in his, into his contract that he had to, you know, he had to provide another book as well for his publishers were just hassling him. But there was a big fanfare when this book came out. You know, it's the first new Thomas Harris book for X number of years. And it's not a Hannibal Lecter book. It's not at all like Hannibal Lecter. It's like a crime thriller. I thought it was pretty decent. I don't think it was great, but I thought it was entertaining. Interesting central character, you know, reasonable plot, some great kind of descriptive scenes and things like that. But I get why it didn't, you know, why it's got a low average rating. I suspect a lot of Hannibal Lecter fans read it and didn't, you know, didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, ahead of that then, uh, another book by... Um, Eric LaRocca, so this was uh, Everything the Darkness Eats, which came out last year, um, and which many people seemed to not like. I thought this was fine. I don't think there was anything particularly wrong with this book. It's very weird. Um, it's sort of a bit all over the place at times, but I enjoyed that about it. I thought it was an interesting book with some interesting ideas, and I suspect the reason it's ranked low is that people who liked Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke read this and didn't like this as much um, and then you know were disappointed by it now, I remember seeing that being a word that I saw in a lot of reviews of the book was that people were disappointed by it but as I say I thought it was pretty decent so that brings us to the number one book um, which again is a, uh, a kind of a kind of not independent but a, a, a horror book by a reasonably new young uh, author who's trying different things I thought it was good Lots of people didn't think it was good. Again, a, a book with lots of mixed reviews, which I think has driven down that average rating. That is Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Core. I thought this was fine. I thought this was an interesting, entertaining ghost story. Cassandra Core's writing is unusual. It's quite like embellished. And I think that turns a lot of people off. And normally that's something that turns me off. But I actually enjoyed this book. I thought it was creepy. I thought it had some good ideas and overall was a fun read. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of people didn't like it and therefore it is my uh, the worst book I've read according to Goodreads, but not according to me. So hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you've read any of the 10 books uh, I talked about and whether you think they deserve to be on a worst books list. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.